American people deserve better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois rise? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise today because the American public was sold a false bill of goods. Rachel, my constituent from Decatur, Illinois, recently contacted my office to let me know that the health care plan she had for her and her daughter is being canceled due to Obamacare. She was provided with the list of options to replace that plan, but the cheapest would double her monthly premium and increase her deductible to $6,000 per person. Mr. Speaker, Rachel and her daughter had a plan, and they liked it, and now she cannot afford any of the alternatives given to her. In her note to me, Rachel summed it up best. We were told we could keep our plan if we liked our plan. We are at a loss how we will continue our health care coverage. Mr. Speaker, the last 45 days prove what many of us have been saying all along. This law is simply unacceptable, unworkable, and unaffordable, period. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Oklahoma rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the president seems to flippantly just talk about 5% of Americans have received a cancellation notice, as if they're just individuals that didn't have a policy that really met his standard for what he was looking for, the administration's looking for. Well, that 5% equals about 5 million people across the country. They're not just a random statistic. They're families and individuals, like the Evans family. And not just this one family, but everyone that works in their business received this same letter. Why is that? Because as the president continues to speak about these are just individuals that receive these individual policies, that's not actually true either. Here's a letter from Edna that came in to the Evans and every employee in their business. It says, as you've heard, the Affordable Care Act is bringing many changes to health insurance. One of these changes is that the association groups which are comprised of small employers, cannot provide coverage as a large group entity. Consequently, Edna is discontinuing the current plans and has notified your employer. The plans they have and they've been able to find are a 25% increase of last year. Their firm cannot hire additional people next year because of the additional costs. This is the United States of America. What are we doing telling people what health insurance that they can purchase? With that, I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm a co-sponsor of the Keep Your Health Plan Act. You know, we had promises to folks that they could keep their health care plan, keep their doctors, and obviously those promises are not being kept. Now, a lot of Americans are finding out this hard news. And one of them is Elizabeth Hoffman, this pretty young lady and her son right here from Hutto, Texas, a little small town in my district. Elizabeth is a single mother with a young son. She does not get insurance through her employer. She bought her insurance through Humana at $167 a month with a $2,000 deductible, and it was the plan she liked. For her, she's lost her plan. Humana has canceled that plan. The plan most similar to the one she has now costs $404 a month and a $2,500 deductible. Needless to say, she is not happy. She's not happy with the Obama plan, and she's not happy with the exchange, and she's quite honestly worried about the pharmacy she's going to go to. She's not likely to have insurance next year. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from North Carolina rise? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak on behalf of North Carolinians. I'd like to share the story of Marion and Donald from Asheville, North Carolina. They are among the 160,000 North Carolinians whose policies have been canceled and whose premiums are going up. Donald and I both had a $5,000 deductible individual HSA policy, and both are canceled now. Our premiums are more than doubling under the replacement policies. I contacted Blue Cross and Blue Shield and learned they are required by law to roll us into a suggested plan 
if I cannot sign up for something else. They also told me they need no additional authority to remove this premium from our bank account in January. Because of the premium increase and, and the cost, I will, I will have to forego paying for gas and groceries every month. This cannot happen. My plan is to cancel our health care policy so that there won't be a policy to roll into and face paying the penalty. As of the end of this month, we will both be uninsured. Mr. Speaker, there are Marians and Donalds across this country facing the same fate. That is why we will continue to fight for this issue. Thank you so much. I yield back. Uh, the gentlewoman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, last uh, week President Obama apologized for not being clear enough when he promised to the public that if you like your current health care plan, you can keep it. Three and a half million Americans have already received letters from their insurance companies informing them, that, informing them their current plan will no longer be offered and that number is expected to reach 10 million. Let me share with you just two stories from the 25th District of Texas. Robert from Austin, Texas started a new business this year and has private insurance for his family that costs $450 a month. His insurer called him this week letting him know his premiums will now be $1,200 a month, more than his mortgage. What's affordable about that? Diane from Driftwood, Texas is a cancer survivor with an adopted special needs child and believed the president when he said she could keep hers and her child's doctors, but her doctors will no longer accept her insurance. Mr. Speaker, I have a growing pile of similar letters and emails on my desk, and what I see is a tragedy in America. Let's let those who like their health care keep their health care. Let's make positive reforms for those currently uninsured, and let's restore the financial stability and relief that Obamacare has robbed many of us from. Americans are hurting, and God we trust. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to introduce the American people to Scott and Denise Wiseman from Missouri City, Texas. These Texans are pictured at the Alamo. They're about to receive God's greatest gift, their first child, a daughter, with a beautiful name, Mia Isabella. Deniza is due on December 31st of 2013. But instead of being filled with only joy. Scott and Denisa are now full of worry because they've been told they will lose their health care, their family health care, on January 1st of 2014, thanks to Obamacare. Neither Scott nor Denisa nor, nor any American should I have to face this ordeal. If my colleagues vote for the Upton Bill tomorrow, families like the Wisemans can love the new gift, their Mia Isabella, without worry. I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 3350. Let's reassure all Americans that if they like their health plan, they can truly keep it. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? Unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, if you like your health plan, you can keep it, was President Obama's promise to the people since 2009. But just last week, he attempted to apologize to those losing health insurance because of the law. Well, I'm glad the President is starting to see the truth. The people need more than just apologies for broken promises. In my Michigan district, a 29-year-old woman named Roseanne has been battling sarcoma cancer for over a year. Because of her disease and treatment, she can't work full-time. But through part-time work, she's managed to pay all her own bills. 
That's until she received a notice that she will lose her current health care coverage because of Obamacare and have to pay $225 more a month for a government approved plan. Roseanne doesn't need an apology. She just wants to keep her insurance along with nearly five million other Americans who have lost their coverage in the last six weeks alone. House Republicans remain committed to fighting for Americans and providing fairness for all. The President needs to join our efforts, Mr. Speaker, and keep his promise to the American people. And I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Missouri rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In Missouri last month, only 751 individuals signed up for the federal exchanges as thousands of other individuals lost their health care. These numbers and the need to institute a fix, these numbers and the need to institute a fix that allows Americans to keep their current coverage further highlight that the President's health care law is a failure. One of my many constituents has been affected by the law is Stephanie Botkin of Barnhart, Missouri. Stephanie, her husband, and two teenage youngsters are hardworking, healthy, and do not use a great deal of health services. She told me that they have been extremely pleased with their current plan because it worked for them in terms of cost and coverage. Now, thanks to the President's health care law, Stephanie has been told that her family cannot keep their current plan and will be forced to buy a different plan with a premium that costs 66 percent more per month, has a higher deductible, and an exorbitant core pay. In other words, the plan that costs more and covers less. Today, the President announced she had another fix to the, to the law, which he technically does not have the authority to do. The fix is for him to sign legislation. The House will pass tomorrow to will protect Americans from this damaging law. For Stephanie and her family's sake, and for the good of the American public, it's time the President does the right thing and works with Congress. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong support of H.R. 3350 to keep your health plan act. While full repeal of the President's health care law is in the best interest of the American people, tomorrow's vote is yet another effort to restore fairness at a time when the administration's refusal to acknowledge its broken promises. The President promised the American people that if you like your health insurance plan, you can keep it. He promised that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Unfortunately, that hasn't worked out. Five million Americans, including many of my constituents, have already received cancellation notices. One constituent, Diane from Worcester, had a policy that she liked, but received notice that it would be canceled, and as she is now unable to keep her doctor with whom she likes and trusts. My vote tomorrow is for Diane and the millions of others like her who want to keep their health care plans that the President had promised they could keep. I ask my colleagues to join me in supporting this legislation. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, for more than three and a half years, President Obama repeatedly promised Tom in this picture that if he liked his health care plan, he could keep it, period. In spite of the President's assurances, Tom, along with three and a half million Americans, have recently received cancellation letters from their insurance providers. You see, Tom is a constituent from Allen, Texas, with dwarfism, which makes access to the doctors he likes, trusts, and knows critical to his well-being. Not only has Obama affected his health care, Tom has said it's taken time, energy, and focus away from growing his small business. That even makes the new pope mad. As Tom's dad often said, if you're not going to be part of the solution, at least don't be part of the problem. Thus far, Obamacare is the problem. It's time for President Obama to join our efforts and provide a real solution to this flawed and unworkable law. Yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Missouri rise? Has unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection. 
I rise today to share a story from Missouri's 4th District from an individual who had her insurance canceled because of Obamacare. Donna from California, Missouri wrote in saying she and her husband received a letter stating that their plan will be canceled next year because it doesn't comply with the law. After researching new plans on the exchanges, she found their premiums for a comparable plan would increase by $300 and their deductible would increase by $1,300. She says, I'm not sure I'll be able to pay my medical expenses. That's a choice being forced upon me and limiting my freedoms. I worry about the children whose parents don't take them to the doctor because they can't afford the out-of-pocket expenses or they lose everything because they did seek medical help for a critically ill child. Donna, we're here today to speak out for you and the millions of Americans who were given a promise. That's why I'm proud to stand with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to ensure that our president keeps the promise he made to so many Americans. You deserve it. I yield back. Gentlewoman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Missouri rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, in recent weeks I've received countless examples of heartbreaking stories from, people, from the people of Missouri's second congressional district about how government-run health care is impacting their lives. Today I rise to put a face on the failures of Obamacare and tell Pam and Dennis Hopman's story who hail from Chesterfield, Missouri. This is their story in their own words, and I quote, we are livid that President Obama broke his promise to us about keeping our doctors. The federal government has very few success stories at running programs, and this is a prime example. Not only am I going to lose my insurance, but I also received a letter that I would lose care from my doctor, my OBGYN, who I have seen for over 30 years. I wanted to stay with my plan. There was nothing wrong with it. It was not a junk plan, which Obama so frequently likes to call them. Mr. Speaker, this is just one of millions of examples of real people being hurt by Obamacare. I yield back. The gentlewoman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Mexico rise? Request unanimous consent to address the House for one minute, revise and extend. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the President promised that if you like your plan, you can keep it, but he hasn't followed that promise and he followed up with a, an administration of the plan that's even worse. Only 172 people have been able to sign up in the one month, 24 hour access to the website that is supposed to allow us to stand up. More people are served popcorn and soft drinks during halftime of an Artesia football game than have been able to get service through this website. The losses are extensive. Ron in Truth of Consequences says that he lost his coverage and the replacement is 350 percent to 550 percent higher. Jacob and Roswell, his whole road crew lost their plan. They're seeing their premiums tri triple. Kathy from Silver City on fixed income, retirement, their premiums are quadrupling. <coughs> Jen on Facebook, going from $300 a month to $1,500 a month, wonders where she can get the money to pay that. Maybe you have an answer, Mr. President. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Missouri rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today President Obama announced yet another delay to his health care mandate. The President is picking and choosing which parts of Obamacare he wants to enforce. The President needs to stop picking winners and losers. Obamacare is broken and cannot be fixed. Republicans led the fight against Obamacare because we knew the mandate would cause individuals to lose their health care. We knew monthly premiums would skyrocket and we knew the quality of health care of Americans would suffer. For over three years, President Obama has made numerous statements to American families to sell his misguided health care law and now he's asking Americans to trust him again? Well, my constituents in the Show Me State are not buying it, President Obama. Mr. Speaker, Obamacare cannot be fixed by delayed portions of the law. Obamacare needs to be repealed. The 
gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to read you a letter from a woman named Catherine from Leveland. Catherine's daughter, Taylor, has an aggressive form of childhood cancer which requires treatments in Lubbock and Houston. I want to read, along with that expense of her medical treatments, we have the expense of keeping an apartment in Houston and traveling back and forth. My husband owns a small car dealership in Leveland. We have a private insurance policy. We have this, had this policy for four years, but we are devastated to find out that Taylor's policy is now being canceled. President Obama said if you're one of the 250 million Americans who already have health insurance, you'll get to keep your own health insurance. Unfortunately, we have not been given that choice to keep Taylor's health insurance. I wanted you to know our story so that when you are in Washington, you can share it with others. I wish that Catherine and Taylor's story were unique. But unfortunately, I received dozens of emails from constituents telling me that about lost coverage, lower benefits, and higher premiums. They're looking for us to make it right. I'll do everything in my power to fix this and ensure that mothers like Catherine don't have to worry about losing critical coverage for their families. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, since 2010, President Obama has touted his well-known phrase, if you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. The past few weeks have made it very clear that President Obama has failed to keep that promise. According to the Associated Press, 3.5 million people have already seen their health plan canceled. Constituents from all over eastern and southeastern Ohio have been contacting my office notifying me of skyrocketing premiums and canceled health plans. Take, for instance, Kathy from my hometown in Marietta, Ohio. Here's the letter she received. She was notified that her plan is not in compliance under the requirements of the ACA and would instead be rolled over into a better plan. Turns out the better plan increases her premiums from $670 a month to $1,600 a month, more than double skyrocketing premiums, canceled plans, and a complete takeover of health care do not make health care affordable. The President should keep his promise to the American people, let Congress work to fix this problem, and support the Keep Your Health Plan Act. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Nebraska rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to highlight the impact of the current health care situation, the millions of Americans who are losing their health care coverage, including many in Nebraska's 3rd District. Pam Weldon, a self-employed small businesswoman from Minotaur, Nebraska, has a pre-existing condition. But she has had for affordable health insurance coverage, which meets her needs. But she just received this letter, which explains her current plan will no longer be offered. Pam told me she had great coverage before, obviously including coverage of her pre-existing condition. She has since tried to see what is available through healthcare.gov and the 800 number as well, but unsuccessfully. As of January 1st, she will lose the coverage that she likes. Like Pam, millions of Americans are learning they are losing their health care plans they were told they could keep. I've heard from many other Nebraskans who are losing their insurance or their rates have increased so much they cannot afford to keep the plan they currently have. This is not what the American people want, and both sides need to work together to make this right. I encourage all of my colleagues to support the Keep Your Health Care Plan Act. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? Mr. Speaker, I request to have Mr. Pence to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Mr. Speaker. The President continues to unilaterally implement these politically motivated piece by piece so called fixes. But this law is broken and it is hurting millions and millions of Americans. Every day I hear from more of my constituents who have had their coverage canceled and seen their premiums increase. I just recently heard from a woman who is going to have a baby early next year from my hometown of Williamsport, Pennsylvania that she will lose her health care coverage January 1. 
I received a copy of a document from a constituent of mine, Paul from Lackawanna County. Notice from the insurance, it is important that you know that the federal health care reform will require many changes to health insurance plans beginning in 2014. As a result of December 31, 2013, the special health insurance plan you have will no longer be offered. We need to repeal the Affordable Care Act and replace it with health care reform that actually lowers cost and increases access to quality health care. The President has an obligation to keep his promise. Going back on one's word sets a very poor example for our children, and that is the truth. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? Consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the Affordable Care Act is more than a website. That's the comforting assurance President Obama is giving to the American people as the continuing train wreck of his law's implementation grinds on. The law is more than a website. Unfortunately, that means its flaws extend past the website as well. It is bad technology mixed with bad policy. Each day we hear more and more people losing plans they liked despite the President's promise they could keep them. Recently, I spoke with Scott Randolph, a self-employed father of two in my district, who is feeling the harmful effects head on. Scott received this notice in the mail that said his insurance plan, which he liked and which worked for him and his two sons, was going to be terminated and replaced with a similar plan at triple the cost. I think Scott said it best when he said, the president guaranteed me, if you like your plan, you can keep it. Well, the fact is, I can keep my plan I just can't afford my plan now. Mr. President, this is unacceptable, period. Let's pass the Keep Your Health Plan Act and offer help to the millions of Americans hurt by this broken promise. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? Without objection. This week, Americans and the administration, along with the media, are starting to see the harmful effects of Obamacare on our country. Many Ohioans are experiencing sticker shock and are desperately worried if they'll have coverage at all and if they'll keep their doctor. A constituent recently told me that his, uh, his hours were cut to part-time in order for his employer to keep the business running. A man from Canton, Ohio, called in and, and will see his premiums increase by 700 percent due to this harmful law. A single mother of two young boys from Ashland, Ohio, will not be able to afford the increase in, pre in price of her premium each month under Obamacare. When she wrote in, she asked a great question. If this is the Affordable Care Act, why can I no longer afford my health care insurance? It seems as though my constituents have more common sense than those who wrote this devastating law. I, along with my colleagues in the House, remain committed to protecting Americans from this law and ensuring that you are in charge of your health care decisions, not some bureaucrat here in Washington. Whether it's the doctor's office, the gas pump, at the dinner table, or the job market, Washington is standing in the way of hardworking Americans, and it's just not fair. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, over the past few months, I've, had, I've heard hundreds of stories from my constituents about the President's health care law and the devastating effects it is having on their families and small businesses. One issue I want to address today is the serious threat Obamacare is to the rural health care situation in our country. For my constituents in Northern California, we already face a shortage of care and choices. Many families have to turn to bordering states to see a doctor or for emergency room visits. Now we know that the law is actually creating a much larger challenge for rural Americans. Today I want to share with you a story from a constituent I met just a couple months ago at the Tule Lake Fair in Siskiyou County. Patricia Plass lives with her husband, a self-employed business owner in a rural border town just inside the California-Oregon state line. They're longtime family doctors in Oregon as well as the closest hospital. These letters I have here also point out that they have had their insurance coverage canceled recently. And so this notification has thrown them into a tizzy because of the law, and their plan has been canceled. They now have to enroll in a plan that they don't like, that is inferior, and increasing their costs by hundreds of dollars each month. 
Trisha wrote to me and said, I have been told we will not have coverage for our regular doctor in Oregon that my family has been seeing for years, and of course our closest hospital, which is also in Oregon. We are now living with the constant fear that our new policy under Obamacare will not even provide coverage when we need it. Mr. Speaker, this is wrong. Mr. President, it's broke. We need to support a new plan. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from D.C. rise? Mr. Speaker, I ask to address the House of One Minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. When the time comes, members and staff will get the, their insurance at DC HealthLink. Uh, they will have a good chance to pay less because they will have 267 choices. In advance, one of my staff members who has a name brand policy uh, from our federal program went on DC HealthLink and found that she could get the same policy for from $160 to $220 less with the same deductible. If Republicans want to deal in anecdotes, hers is far more typical than those from the crowd who have gone from 41 repeals to their new strategy of actively sabotaging the Affordable Health Care Act. I yield back the remainder of my time. The gentle <clears throat> gentlewoman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina rise? Speaker, I have some consent to address the House for one minute, advising extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, Obamacare is a disaster. The President knows it, Congress knows it, and most importantly, the American people now know it. The President claims to be working with Congress to stop the train wreck the ACA is waging on American families. Actions speak louder than words. It's time for him to engage with House Republicans to find a solution. We must help Mary in Lexington, South Carolina, whose health care policy premium has already increased 275 percent since the beginning of this year, and Rebecca from Aiken, who will be forced to pay $600 more a month for the same coverage in January, and Alvin, an uninsured veteran also living in Aiken, who has tried to purchase insurance on the government health care website but can't afford it because the premium will be higher than his mortgage, utilities, and Internet combined. This is absurd. For the sake of the middle class, we must replace Obamacare with common sense solutions that protect families, provides a safety net, and promotes jobs. In conclusion, God bless our troops, and we'll never forget September 11th and the global war on terrorism. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At least 225,000 residents of Michigan have or will shortly receive letters informing them that their current health plan insurance policies will be canceled because of Obamacare. To put that number in context, more people in Michigan have had their private health care plans canceled due to Obamacare than have even selected the private plan nationwide on healthcare.gov. Adding insult to injury, the dismal enrollment number announced by the administration does not re represent an adequate depiction of the Obamacare experience. Whether it's Nancy from Grant, Barbara from Walker, Terry from Granville, or David from Twin Lake, my constituents all seem to be sharing the same experience, frustration followed by exasperation, rounded out with higher costs that they can't afford. We hear you, and I'm here for you. The reality of Obamacare's experience is a website that is difficult to navigate when it actually works, coupled with policy options that result in higher health care costs and for Michigan consumers. I applaud my friend and colleague Fred Upton, who is going to be leading a charge to provide a legislative solution to that problem tomorrow. And I hope our friends across the aisle will be able to provide that same relief to their constituents, and I hope they'll join me in doing so. And I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Florida rise? As I have to revise and extend my remarks, one minute, please. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Any group, the House Republicans, that passed the bill 44 times to rescind 
the health care bill, Obamacare, and because Obama cares. The shutdown cost the American people $24 billion. I come from the great state of Florida, where the Medicaid extension have not to this time been accepted. That means that over a million people, a million people will not receive health care. Every time I speak to a group of students at the University of Florida, Florida A&M, I ask them how many students can stay on their family plan because of Obamacare. Every single hand goes up. So let's be clear. The first rollout was the, the uh, proposal that let over 3 million people stay on their family plan. And the donut hole, because Obama cares, we are closing that that was instituted under the Bush administration. I really do believe to whom God has given much, much is expected. I really do expect more from the People's House than what we have gotten from the Republican leadership. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from North Dakota rise? Without objection. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Wayne and Leanne Bucalls operate a ranch near Rame, North Dakota. They've never been active in politics, but a recent letter from their insurance company has changed all of that. For their letter informed them that they'd be losing their health care coverage due to the excessive regulations of Obamacare. Mr. Speaker, 36,000 North Dakotans are receiving similar cancellations notices, similar to that of Wayne and Leanne. Each of these figures on this poster represents over 1,200 North Dakotans, just like Wayne and Leanne. On the other hand, only 30 North Dakotans have been able to sign up for Obamacare through the first month. Not 30,000, not 3,000, not even 300, Mr. Speaker, 30. Each figure on this part of the graphic represents one North Dakotan able to sign up. Mr. Speaker, in North Dakota, like much of America, a man's word is his bond. We must help the President make good on his promise and, and uh, pass the Keep Your Health Plan Act tomorrow. And I yield back the remainder of my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? Without objection. Today I rise on behalf of the people I represent in Michigan's 4th District who are feeling the real impact of Obamacare. They're paying more for health care, losing the coverage they have and like, and having their work hours cut. I've been receiving calls, emails, and letters from people worried about the negative impacts Obamacare is having on their lives. Jeff Frazier from Midland, Michigan wrote, and I'm quoting here, my wife has been recently informed by her insurance carrier that her health care policy does not comply with the Affordable Care Act. Now we must purchase a new policy to get the same coverage at an 18 percent increase in our premium. So what happened to the, if you like your insurance, you can keep it, end quote. Unfortunately, Jeff's story isn't unique. He and an estimated 225,000 people in the state of Michigan and millions of Americans across the country are losing the coverage they have and like because of Obamacare. I urge my colleagues, join me in standing up against higher health care costs, dropped coverage, reduced work hours that are hurting the constituents I serve in Michigan and Americans all across the country. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, New Jersey's largest newspaper, the Star Ledger of Newark, yesterday reported that fewer than 27,000 people have signed up for private health care insurance via the troubled Obamacare website, healthcare.com. The number includes just 741 in New Jersey. These enrollment numbers are being dramatically outpaced by the millions of Americans, including at least 800,000 New Jerseyans, who are losing their plans because of the law, despite the President's promise they would not. The House will vote tomorrow on the Keep Your Health Plan Act that will provide much needed certainty and relief to Americans 
who have lost or are about to lose their current health care coverage. I encourage President Obama to keep his promise to the American people and join members of Congress on both sides of the aisle in support of letting those who like their current health care plans keep them under the law. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, sometimes the truth hurts. And for a quarter of a million Pennsylvanians, the truth really hurts because they are losing their health care plans. Mike McKean and his father own and operate Titan Tool Company. It's a small business in Fairview, Pennsylvania, that their family has run since 1920. In his letter to our office, Michael wrote, my dad has always prided himself of offering 100% health care coverage for every single one of our associates. It has been this way for as long as I can remember. However, under Obamacare, their yearly premium will rise 113.9%, taking the cost from $120,000 to $227,000. One of his employees will see her monthly premium go from just over $300 to $940. That's a 249% increase. In Michael's words, this type of increase is too much for the company to weather. Next year, for the first time in decades, my father and my family are forced to drop insurance co coverage for our employees. And he also added, being the generous and concerned person my dad is, he said he would give each employee this year's cost of premium to offset the rise in cost. But beyond that, he cannot afford to do any more. This means that next December, we will all have to pay enormous increases out of our pocket for poor coverage. That happens to be the truth and not one that they have to go back on later on. Mr. Speaker, I thank you and I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Mississippi rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, they said implementing Obamacare is going to be a train wreck. And that train wreck went right through the Etta community in Union County, Mississippi, and ran right over Reverend Bobby Irvin. Reverend Irvin tells me, I had health insurance. I was happy with my coverage. Specifically, it's a coverage that I picked out and I selected. And my policy was canceled because it did not meet Obamacare guidelines. Reverend Irvin was made a promise by the President of the United States. If you like your health insurance, you can keep it. That promise has been broken. It is vital that we pass the Keep Your Health Plan Act so that this House can step up and honor the promise that was made to Reverend Irvin and those Americans like him. If you like your health insurance, you can keep it. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, Dan from Greensburg, Pennsylvania wrote to me. He said, I'm having very serious difficulties with the new health care. I called a place from the marketplace today inquiring on an affordable plan for my wife. I currently pay about $300 per month through my employer just for her coverage, but she's lost her job. The marketplace premium for her beginning in January will be over $800 per month. How do you think this is affordable coverage? This is a 200% increase or more for me. My wife and I both have bills to pay. I will lose my house if I pay this outrageous premium. I will find it to be necessary to drop her from coverage. I would have been willing to do my share in this, but this increase is way beyond my reach. I will not be able to cover my wife now. I'm 62 years old. I've had a major heart attack three years ago. I was revived four times during this heart attack and then had complications which required emergency abdominal surgery to save my life again. I'm back to work, but I have medical expenses. And now my premium just for my wife is doubling to cover this. I'm sorry for being angry, but I feel cheated. I'm not able to afford the outrageous premiums, and I will not be able to cover my wife. Mr. Speaker, this breaks your heart. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York rise? Without objection. Well, this. Really, I felt compelled to come because 
let's really talk about what this is. This is the 44th time to try to deny people access to health care. That's really what it is. If you listen to some of my colleagues, you would think that all of Americans are being denied health care coverage. But number one, we're talking about 5%. And 5% is too much. So what the president did today was to say that we're going to make sure that those individuals who have lost their coverage, if the insurance companies will stand up, they'll do the right thing. What this says is that what we know, though, is there's 36 states, most of them head by Republicans, that have already decided they didn't want to get involved. They didn't want state exchanges. So they wanted to make sure that or deny individuals who have had pre-existing diseases, because you could come and talk about the people who are saying, thank you, Mr. President, for the Affordable Care Act, because of my pre-existing condition, I have been turned down by insurance companies. With affordable care, that won't happen. Young people who don't have insurance up to age 26, they will still be covered because of the Affordable Care Act. What this is, is a process, an attempt to try to end the Affordable Care Act for the 44th time. Let's not do that. Let's give the people right to health care. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Utah rise? Without objection. In 2003, five-year-old Isabella Jane was diagnosed with leukemia, a disease that has driven the decisions her family has made since that time on where to live, what doctor to have, what insurance to gain. She had daily chemotherapy for three years and is now in remission. But 18 months ago, she'd, she started to have side effects from this disease that affected her heart, her bones, her cognitive processing. Since that time, and since Obamacare was passed, her insurance rates have more than doubled, and she was told this year that they were, their insurance would be canceled by the end of this year. As Isabel Jane's mother wrote, the Affordable Care Act has seriously threatened my family's way of life. For over 10 years, we've had coverage we needed to care for our family. I defy anyone who says the insurance we currently have is not enough. My daughter is living proof of that it is. Mr. Speaker, these people are being hurt by the present system, and that needs to change. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The, for what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, by the government's own numbers, for every American who has found health coverage under Obamacare since it rolled out, some 50 Americans have lost their health insurance on the individual market, but that doesn't account for the many millions more who are losing employer insurance or are losing wages as a direct result of the Democrats' Obamacare fiasco. Uh, one such family is the Howard Asbury family in Mariposa, California. Mr. Asbury writes, I'm a retired union carpenter and I'm covered under the union's retiree health plan. When I retired, my wife went to work for the billing company for an ambulance company. Yesterday, she was informed by the owner that he was dropping all health care coverage and cutting all employees below supervisor to part time. We'll be able to enroll her and our two children out of my retirement health plan, though my union, uh, through my union, uh, though this does not address the loss of income. So we have to pay for her coverage and the children on $440 less of income. Mr. Speaker, my office is being flooded by such complaints. I have to believe that our colleagues across the aisle are hearing the same things. Why aren't they listening? The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? Speaker, I have Without objection. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, I rise today to uh, indicate, as many of my colleagues have, that beyond the uh, so-called glitches and uh, hic hiccups of the website, that the President's health care bill simply is not working. In fact, it is hurting. Since the President's health care bill was signed into law, I've seen the anxiety, the confusion, and the genuine fear of South Jersey families, employees, employers, and, and of health care professionals. And for four years, the conversations around the kitchen table and the water coolers have been about this anxiety, uncertainty. That has turned to real fear, fear and anger. 
Terry from Millville told me that both her mother and her mother-in-law had current plans. They were very happy with them. They were canceled under the president's health care bill, only to be replaced with plans with higher co-pays and uh, premiums. Randy from Skullville wrote on my Facebook that the monthly premiums are now $2,500, $700 more than before. Lou, who opened a small business less than two years ago, hired more than 50 people, is going to have to make them part-time. This simply is not working, and it's wrong. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, we all heard President Obama say that if you like your health care plan, you can keep it, period. A constituent of mine from Yakima, Gary Bailey, writes, My wife and I are self-employed. Our provider just sent us a letter telling us that due to the Affordable Health Care Act, our policy will no longer be available and we'll have to choose a new policy. He went on to say, the least expensive policy is double the cost of my original policy and the deductible went up to $10,000. Mr. Speaker, Gary is not alone. Millions of hardworking Americans have lost the insurance they like and can afford. The keep your health care plan that we will vote on tomorrow fulfills President Obama's promise, even if he won't. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Ask the United States Senate to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, all we're asking is that the President keeps his word. I've got uh, hundreds of letters now from uh, constituents from all across my entire district uh, Blue of California canceling Nate and Tuesdays uh, from Oakdale, their policy. Before the Affordable Care Act, our health care coverage was $279 a month for me and my wife. We recently got this letter in the mail stating our plan is no longer available due to the Affordable Care Act and that our premium will be $434.60 a month, an increase in $155.60. Tom from Ceres says, Farm Bureau has informed me that my med insurance will be canceled in January 2014. My premium will increase 170 percent for now. Valerie from Denaire, my policy was canceled. In shopping for a new plan, I see that my monthly costs will at least triple for inferior coverage. These lists go on and on and on. Don from uh, Turlock says, I just received a letter today from my health care provider and they've notified us our health care insurance has just doubled. We owe it to the American people that this cannot go on any longer. The president needs to fulfill his promise. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I rise to give voice to my constituents. Well, I would expect that Obamacare's thousands of pages would help at least a handful of people. A sampling of mail coming into my office lets me know that help by the Affordable Care Act is rare. Steve from Greenfield says he and his wife are in good health with current insurance costing $485 a month. Under Obamacare, that goes to roughly $1,150 a month, a 237% increase. June from Batavia received a letter from United Healthcare. They're discontinuing coverage for most of her family's doctors. And while she says she can handle it, it'll be a problem for her husband. He has stage four kidney disease and is on dialysis, dialysis and will soon not have his doctors. Don from Loveland says, if the Affordable Care Act is allowed to stand, my family will have to come up with an extra $6,600 next year. We can't afford that. Mr. Speaker, from what I'm seeing, stress and anxiety are becoming an increasingly common diagnosis, all due to Obamacare. The website isn't the only problem, Mr. Speaker. The law is the problem. And I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Indiana rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again today, the President said to the American people, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it, at least for one more year, if you're lucky. The problem is, saying something many times does not magically make it come true. Right now, 
Only 701 people in the state of Indiana have been able to sign up for insurance through the Affordable Care Act exchanges. According to the Indiana Department of Insurance, more than 108,000 Hoosiers will receive or have received cancellation letters. One of those people is Michael Sturgis of Greensburg. He called my office after receiving a cancellation letter from his insurance company. Michael was told his monthly premium was going to increase from $397 a month to $831 a month. His $5,000 deductible will go up to $7,300. That is unacceptable and it is certainly not affordable. That's why we need to pass H.R. 3350, the Keep Your Health Plan Act of 2013, and let the American people remain in charge of their health care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Indiana rise? Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent to address the House for one minute to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, Millions of Americans find themselves in the heartbreaking situation of losing their health care plans thanks to a broken promise that the White House is now scrambling to try and fix. Hoosiers like Jared from Woodburn, Indiana, were told that they could keep their plans. But unfortunately, Jared found this cancellation letter in his mailbox on September 23rd. He is just one of the more than 3.5 million Americans who lost coverage under Obamacare. For Jared, the timing couldn't have been worse. In the middle of selling their home and making an offer on another, Jared, his wife, and one-year-old son were hit with a cancellation letter and the real possibility that their health care costs will become unaffordable. President Obama's health care law is hurting Hoosiers. If he's serious about helping Americans like Jared, he should start by keeping his promise and signing the Keep Your Health Care Plan, Keep Your, Keep Your Health Plan Act as soon as it is passed. Enough is enough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Colorado rise? Uh, permission to address the House for one minute. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My office has been flooded with constituents calling to share their Obama horror story. Take Nicole Butler, for instance, a constituent of mine living in Colorado Springs and a mother of three children. Her family's Humana insurance plan was canceled because it was deemed insufficient under Obamacare. She is currently paying $431 per month for what is, in her words, a great plan. She and her husband are insuring their family of five within a tight budget. The cheapest Obamacare plan she could find would cost her family $1,003 per month in premiums, more than twice as much. This is the same story for 250,000 other Colorado families who have been canceled. Mr. Speaker, the American people took our president at his word when he said, if you like your plan, I, you can keep it. I look forward to legislation which will give relief to families in Colorado and all over this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Utah rise? Without objection. Mr. Speaker, we have officially entered La La Land, where the President thinks, but by the mere power of his own voice, he can turn back time by simply announcing that he will no longer enforce provisions within his own law. Think about that. The answer to fixing this law is for him to announce that they won't enforce the law. And that tells you how desperate they are. His announcement today will only make things worse. And it's the American people who will continue to pay. I, like everyone who has spoken on the floor this afternoon, have many, many examples of people who are being hurt today because of provisions of Obamacare. Amanda from Bountiful, Utah, within my district, has seen their families' deductibles and the rate they will pay double. Sunday from Southern Utah has had her plan canceled entirely canceled and as a small business owner they are scrambling now to try to find something some way in which they can maintain insurance for their families president obama repeatedly promised that if you have health insurance you can keep it that promise has not been fulfilled we call upon him to do that today and mr speaker i yield back the gentleman's time has expired for what purpose does the gentleman from kentucky rise to address the house for one minute without objection 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share some powerful stories that Kentuckians have shared with me regarding their, their experiences with Obamacare. Jim Holloway of Glasgow was notified that his small business insurance plan will be canceled. Here's a letter. Dear James Holloway II, you'll be moving to a health care reform also called the Affordable Care Act Compliant Plan. Mr. Holloway told me the plan I had was not a junk plan. I like my plan, but unfortunately won't be able to keep that plan. Tanya Weitschecker Bollingreen also received a cancellation notice of her plan. After calling her insurance agent, she learned that a similar plan to what she and her husband had was available at a cost of $490 more a month. Vince Berta, also of Bollingreen, said that by being forced to go on to the exchange, his family's insurance rate will jump from $375 a month to $849 a month. And he asked a fair question. An over 100% increase? What part of this is affordable? Vince asked. The fact is that President Obama repeatedly promised Americans that if they liked the plan, they could keep it. I've heard it over and over from Kentuckians. That's not the case. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois rise? Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to share two stories with you. I have a 